everybody. It's great to be here with you, and thanks for joining me for this uh, breakout session. And the title of today's talk is Competing in the Age of AI. My name is Tim Lee. I'm a professor of digital business in Washington School of Management in the Department of Technology Operation Management. Um, artificial intelligence, basically, the intelligence demonstrated by machines are everywhere. And we all know that organizations adopting those technologies and it's in our phones and cars, on the searches, dating banks, and then all over the media. And um, probably some of you remember the visionary physicist Stephen Hawking once explained that everything that civilization has to offer is a product of human intelligence. The success in creating AI will be the biggest event in human history. And no wonder so many organizations um, from the incumbent firms that we heard from the keynote talks, the Ahold, and also FITS, adopting AIs and throughout different parts of their organization to very new and startup and rural type of companies that are really trying to get hold of AI technologies. But there are many challenges for businesses that embrace AI to compete um, with the digital as well as the traditional rivals. And today, we're going to walk you through a number of challenges that I have discovered together with my team um, while doing research over the last decade. Let's first look at one traditional industry, the most affected uh, by digital technologies over the last few years. And what I try to show you in this picture is a bank. It's a physical branch of a bank. But how about answering this question? Do I still need to go to a branch to do my banking? I don't really go to the branches anymore because I don't need to access banking product by going to the bank. No matter how much effort of you or the company and trying to put in redesigning those branches, I think nowadays the consumers have shifted their behavior. It's, it's a behavioral change. Whenever I ask the question, do we need a bank? As a very controversial question to my uh, executive audience in my classroom, I often get laughter. But actually, most of bankers in the audience would actually agree with me that banks are no longer necessary, but the banking is. I'm not the one saying that, but in fact, Bill Gates, Back in 1994, that was about 25 years ago, already said that banking is necessary, but banks are not. Why is that? Because banking as a sector and banks in particular are being disrupted by fintech companies such as uh, Alipay. Um, now the new name is called On Financial. It's a affiliate company for uh, Chinese Alibaba Group. On Financial by now is the highest valued fintech company in the world uh, that has a valuation of roughly about 150 billion. And um, it's actually three times of Deutsche Bank and equivalent to Visa as a company. So On Financial uses artificial intelligence and data from Alipay. Basically, its core is a mobile payment platform to run an extraordinary variety of different businesses, including insurances, consumer lending, money market funds, wealth management, credit card reading services, and even some online games and try to help people, encourage them to reduce their carbon footprint. So what is the value in all of those products? So what you see here in the photo, um, on the one hand, uh, Alexa and Google Home product. On the other hand, you see autonomous driving cars like Tesla. And AI actually set the prices on Amazon and recommend songs on Spotify and matches buyers and also sellers on eBay marketplace and also quantify some of the borrowers from our financial loans. And rather than relying on traditional business to process and operated by workers and managers and engineers, supervisors of customer services, the value that we see right now that being generated and offered 
are basically served up by algorithms. And managers and engineers design those AI algorithms and softwares that make the algorithms work. But after that, the system delivers value on its own and through digital automation or by leveraging an ecosystem of providers, mostly outside of the boundaries of the firm. And I'm sure you have all heard about the notion of digital platform that becomes very important and interesting. So the question that firms are answering a lot at this moment is how does your company, right, use advanced technologies or AI to create value today? And this has become the business challenge of our time. If you ignore it or get it wrong, then anything from your job to entire organization could become vulnerable to rivals who get it right. And, but most importantly, next question is how will AI change the way how your companies compete? I think in the presence of AI, five major domains, as far as the strategy is concerned, actually are changing. Strategies are shifting away from traditional differentiation based on cost, quality, and brand equity and specialized and vertical expertise and towards advantages like business network position, like accumulation of unique data and the deployment of very sophisticated analytics and algorithms. And number one change, as far as I can see it, customers are changing and customers are no longer just massive market for the firm, they're dynamic networks and customers are the key influencers in this. Second, the nature of the competition has changed. And there are blurred boundaries and blurred distinctions between different parties and rivals. And competitors no longer just compete, but they also cooperate in key areas. And competition basically across very fluid industries. The next one is data. Data is continuously generated everywhere. It's not under just structured data, but also most importantly these days, unstructured data is increasingly usable and valuable. And value in data is connecting is across different cells within the organization. And innovation, decisions made based on testing and validating rather than static notions of thinking about an idea and focus on some minimum valuable prototypes and iterations after launch. The last one is value. The value proposition that defined by changing customer needs and cover the next opportunity rather than the current opportunity for customer value. So we have been working with different organizations in various forms of collaboration at the university over the last decade. And uh, we find in particular that there are four challenges as far as working and adopting AI in the current organization. Um, I'm going to walk you through each one of them. And then we'll go into four different types of projects that we have done with um, different organizations to illustrate those points. The first one is operating model. It's truly a challenge, especially when it comes to traditional and incumbent firms. Not all of the incumbent firms actually have the capacity and also competence to develop very extensive AI-driven business models as Abraham or as Philips. So a lot of them think about doing so, but still remain in the position of being a supplier of very, very niche products. So for them to get out of their territory and thinking about how to become a platform has remained as a challenge. So what is operating model? Operating model is a very simple statement of you know, integrating and standardizing requirements for the firm's core process. And, um, but how 
This answers the question of how the process are organized in order to create and also deliver value. Especially in the process of AI, it is a question of how to embed the intelligence in software and connect it to the internal and external users. The second challenge, as we have seen over the years, is the data. It's not really the lack of data, but it's how to make meaning out of the data. The process that lead to gather, cleanse, integrate, and safeguard the data in a very systematic and sustainable and scalable way, that remains as a challenge. Third one is algorithms or analytics, which generate predictions about the future state or action for the business. Analytics basically systematically convert some internal or external data into predictions and insights and choices, uh, which could potentially guide uh, the decisions or automate some operational workflows. And that is non-trivial. And that has increasingly higher requirement as far as ethics concerned and transparency and privacy is concerned. And the last one is experimentation. Um, how to build an experimentation platform on which hypotheses that regarding new algorithms could be tested to ensure that the suggestion uh, could have an intended effect. That actually remains as a challenge. And over years, we have worked with different organizations um, in different type of business and um, to tackle the AI or advanced technology problem adoption of those, those technologies. I'm going to walk you through of four different um, collaborations that we are currently working uh, with different partners. The first one uh, is a multi-year collaboration that we're currently working on with one of the leading uh, insurance provider, uh, Vivat. Um, so Vivat is, well, insurance company. Insurance company by its very nature is incumbent firm that have been in the market for a very long time, but what is not so easy for them that make their transformation and digital transformation pretty hard is the fact that a lot of their businesses, a lot of their customers still remain as offline customers. It's probably to the astonishment to a lot of people. How could that be possible? On the one hand, we see those um, disruptors, fintech companies coming to the market and try to grab the market share from the financial service companies. But for the exact reason that the traditional and incumbent firms like you know, this particular company we work with has more than 80% of the customers remain as offline customers, meaning that they were acquired through intermediaries rather than through online channels. And they probably got a call from um, their service representative or from the intermediaries and were acquired from that way. And which also means that firms have very, very limited understanding of what customers want and what customers would like to do. So there's a lack of customer information on the part of the company. So number one, um, emphasized or focus of our project and our collaboration with Viva is try to develop understanding of how to look at this customer-oriented digital transformation in this multi-channel environment. We have conducted a number of different uh, projects um, related to this, uh, to this objective. We look at how to conduct proactive term management, knowing what the customers actually want and knowing you know, the offline channel and combined with online channel, what a different type of behavior customers actually exhibit and what is the price and service elasticity across different channels. We also look into um, how to focus on the customer and come up with life event targeting and using different information uncertainty and information seeking behavior of customers try to explore the different heterogeneity in their customer and in order to do this better. 
So as far as the operating model is concerned, the firm is trying to move away from being a supplier and try to be, become an omni-channel provider. And as far as the data is concerned, and try to combine the offline communication with online interaction and to build algorithms of analytics to help them to conduct proactive churn management, smart channel migration, and live event targeting. And they run all kinds of email marketing campaigns and search marketing campaigns in order to help them to do this job. So this is one of um, the collaboration that we have right now with um, a traditional incumbent firm. The second example is also an incumbent firm, um, although the size is somewhat smaller, is a recent collaboration started a year ago with uh, a self-storage company uh, called Allsafe. It's probably one of the largest in the Netherlands and uh, it's a family-based business. It's a traditional business in a way that is heavily based on offline. You probably start um, you search when you want to store a certain item while you holiday or probably on relocation due to job um, change. You want to store um, your, your furniture and your belongings into a physical space. You probably start your journey by checking out the website for pricing and product units in order to locate what you actually want. But once you find the price, the next thing you do is pick up the phone and contact the sales representative and then go to their service locations in order to check out what the service looks like and how the business unit looks like, how the space looks like. And then you would complete your transaction on site. So largely, a lot of the information that firms have access to are from offline channel rather than online channel. So for them, this integration from online to offline and how to leverage online click stream data in order to understand where customers come from, what they really want, and how can we develop the product and services and pricing accordingly in order to help the customers to do a better job. So similar to um, the insurance company and Allsafe also would like to move from a supplier operating model or business model into an omni-channel provider and try to integrate the offline communication with their online clickstream data, online customers interaction, and to learn better about how pricing should build some intelligence in there, not just in the conventional capacity and yield and revenue management that is focused on the capacity utilization, but really understand where customers come from and how they would react to a certain way that the firms implemented either pricing or different service elements, and so that they can incorporate that to develop the next generation of product or pricing. And also they try to improve their pricing communication in terms of different starting prices and different way that communicate those different prices or service elements with their customers and they try to build those intelligence into their dynamic pricing algorithm and also incorporate customer services, customer behavior into those new models. The third side of projects are related to digital commerce and digital platforms. You can see a number of um, different um, partners that we have worked with and working with at the moment. And essentially this type of uh, companies or platforms, a, a, a platform or, or internet native companies, right? So a lot of them actually lack or totally lack of uh, physical presence that makes their business model a lot more uh, flexible, a lot more fluid. And for them, it's a lot easier to run all kinds of experimentation or build new innovation into their business to adopt the AI initiative. But the challenge for them uh, are slightly different from the challenges we have seen uh, in the prior two examples. For instance, for digital commerce and digital platforms these days, and what they would like to do is to serve the right customer um, with the right product, the right service, and deliver the right message 
And sometimes the messages could be advertising messages um, and at the right time and at the right place as far as location is concerned and also at the right device. And in order to improve either customer transactions and reduce the customer um, returns or improve customers engagement and satisfaction at large. So typically what we do with those, with those firms are um, working with them um, in large scale field experimentation um, or statistical uh, analytics and including price, for instance, sometimes try to discover the, um, uh, the device differences and try to understand uh, how to design and testing personalization and customization uh, in those platform designs. Um, and the last set of, um, set of, uh, um, of projects actually related to uh, digital advertising and auction markets. Um, and firms here actually working with very high frequency data. Uh, sometimes we're looking at millions of uh, different auction uh, related to advertising uh, on a daily basis. Um, involve multiple partners, advertisers, publishers, and ad exchange, and algorithms and try to provide market insights, sometimes try to detect the systematic optimistic behavior from different parties or make policy recommendations. And um, there also have been a number of natural experiments as far as the market is concerned and moving from a certain mechanism to other type of mechanism in order to explore uh, what the changes are. So um, having seen these examples, I would like to um, summarize um, the importance in, sh in shift uh, in those different um, areas. First, operating model. Instead of just digitizing or digitized process or automating the process, we're looking more and more of customers of customer-focused um, business model. That talking about digital business model rather than digitized business model. And uh, the process, in the, the business model, instead of focusing on the process, are moving more and more into customer driven. The second, as far as data is concerned, is no longer just the, the access of data, the more of data or the integration of data. We're talking more and more about the quality of data and high intelligence of data. And on the algorithm side, as mentioned earlier, and firms actually spending a lot of time thinking about how to um, build transparency rather than just improving the efficiency in their algorithm and analytics and try to make sure that ethics and privacy um, actually addressed um, and those concerns um, are actually addressed. And um, last but not least, uh, how to build this, uh, this innovations through rapid experimentation and continuous learning through experimentation. Um, we work with um, different type of industries and different type of organizations uh, in a wide range of different uh, um, topics and projects um, at Erasmus University uh, under the umbrella of, uh, of ACTA. Uh, here are just some example of projects and uh, in portfolio of research. We use a wide range of different uh, research methods to answer those research questions together with an extensive list of partner companies. Um, and we are trying to um, at least contribute to the understanding of how to help those organizations. It doesn't matter if you come from uh, the incumbent industry firms or that you're new and innovative companies uh, at the builder stage or actually at uh, replenishment stage. Um, um, we we'll try to help um, those companies and deeper the understanding um, in, um, in this question of how to compete in the digital age. And with that, uh, I would like to open the floor um, to the audience and to answer any questions you may have for this breakout session. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Lars, and I will be moderating the following Q&A session. Um, I would like to remind you that you can forward your questions through the live chat on the bottom of your screen. Uh, ask your questions there, and we will answer them live. Okay. Um, the first question from the audience. 
as people have different ideas about what is valuable, how will AI include these in providing different kinds of value in line with these individuals? I think the question has two parts. Um, if you're talking about individuals and what AI actually means to individuals, I think this is probably, um, you know, growing, uh, you can see a growing uh, a number of examples that illustrate the value of AI to individuals, right? So uh, we see, uh, as mentioned earlier, you see that Spotify actually was making recommendations and you see Amazon that there are also um, recommended items to you. And if you open the phone, there's Siri and there are other type of uh, home assistant devices out there, right? So those are uh, already AI enabled services to individuals. Um, but talking about firms and they are looking at um, how to make use of their um, you know, um, use, use uh, the intelligence that they can learn from data and derive analytics and understanding how to improve their services with some automated decision-making. So there, um, I think it's, it's, it's very important to ask question of not what is fancy to, uh, to pursue, but what is important for the customers, uh, what is important for the customers to improve their experience. Right. If you think that um, in the case of, uh, of insurance, for instance, it's not a question of how to target the customers per se, but it's a question of who are the customers that we can understand them better. Instead of saying, oh, let's sell the insurance, the car insurance to the individuals. But I think nowadays the insurance company is asking the question, how can we actually understand what are the life events that customers are going through? Are they going to have a baby? Are they going to move? Are they actually going to marry? And perhaps they're going to change a car. Once they understand those life events of these individuals, and it's easier to think about how can we actually predict those life events? And probably those people that who are going through those life events, yeah, would have a very different um, information seeking behavior and they would need, some of them would actually need to have more information for your particular type of product, like car insurance, if they're going to buy a car, uh, or house insurance, if they're going to move, compared to those ones that either not going through those, those life events or not in need of their services. So it's very important to focus on customers, understand what they need, and then try to look for what are the places within your organization that you can help with the data with the knowledge to automate this and to build customer um, intelligence into those uh, processes. Okay, a second question. Um, what is the most a common change you implement in the operating model while driving a digital transformation? Yeah, that's a very nice question. So um, when we're talking about um, operating model here, um, it's also very important to understand the digital business model in general. So um, mostly we're talking about how um, the value is created within our organization and also how the value is being delivered to customers as the two most important questions to answer in, um, for a business model. But we're talking about digital business model. In fact, um, in a study that uh, published by uh, two scholars from MIT, um, they uh, define four types of, um, of digital business model. First, as a supplier, depending on how much information you know about your customer and also depending um, on uh, the extensiveness of uh, you business partners within the ecosystem and supplier as minimum in terms of how much um, they know about their customers and also in terms of uh, how many, um, how many uh, partners they work with. And you also have omni-channel um, players that firms know a lot about their customers but nevertheless not necessarily working with a lot of others. And also you have a platform providers, right? So um, if you based on those two dimensions and firms are waiting to know more about their customers and then also trying to expand uh, the business partners and workforce. So the value is no longer created by your single firm, 
but by extensive list of uh, partners that you work with. Okay, Professor Lee, thank you very much for your time. Um, we have many more questions, but unfortunately, we lack the time to discuss them all.